Hello, and how are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful, okay, bye, bye. Don't scratch me. Wonderful day so far. And today I'm going to be talking about three fun graphic novels. What's really interesting about these three is that they start off getting progressively more complex and difficult in regards to age range, which I think is funny because I just picked these three randomly from the collection of graphic novels that Miss Betsy got me. And it ended up working out pretty well. All right, so the first graphic novel is called Otto's Backwards Day. It's a tune book written by Frank Camuso with Jay Lynch, so their team. This, I think that this is best for younger readers. I don't think it will appeal to older readers just because I don't think they will find it interesting, but I think younger readers will find it silly and entertaining. So readers who are say five, six, or seven. It's about this cat named Otto who's about to have a birthday party. He wakes up, or the night before his party, he sees the cake and the presents and the decoration, and he sees his mom and dad setting up for it, and he says, oh man, all the things that are most important for my birthday party are here. And his parents are say, well, your friends and family aren't here yet. And Otto says, well, that's not what's most important for a birthday party. It's all about the cake and the presents and the decoration. And Otto's parents remind him that he should think about what he just said. He doesn't really get it because he's, he's still young. He's a baby cat. So that night, Otto's presents and cake are stolen by a creature from Backwards World. And in Backwards World, that's exactly what it sounds like. But what's really perfect, what's really hilarious about it that I think younger kids will get a kick out of is that every, in the world, there's tons of words that are the same spelled backwards. So there's tons of palindromes. So that would, could be a fun talking point. There's interesting creatures that are completely backwards. And overall, just the, it's a very cartoony style, as you can see has a lot of humor and I think that it also has a good moral lesson about what's important what's truly important so I would suggest Otto's Backwards Day for younger readers who are just getting into graphic novels and maybe starting to outgrow picture books but aren't quite ready for this chapter books yet so I would consider this almost like the step reader of graphic novels. <laughs> so the next graphic novel is an oldie, but it's a goodie. And it's Baby Mouse, Queen of the World, written and illustrated by Jennifer L. Holm and Matthew Holm, who are actually a brother and sister um, team. I think that this was one of my favorites. It was so cute. And it, this one also had a good lesson. So Baby Mouse is a mouse and she's in third grade. She wants to be queen of the world. She, every day is just the same old thing for her. She has this catchphrase, which is typical, but how she generally says her catchphrase is, ugh, that's typical. She's very sassy and funny. She has a huge imagination. So even though technically this book is set in the mouse's day-to-day -day world, throughout the story, different things happen during her day at school. And she gets lost with her and carried away with her imagination. And this is really cute. So for example, she gets daydreams that she's in space and on a mission. She daydreams that she's a kind of a noir detective or that she's a wild baby mouse. So the plot of the story, she's in third grade. 
and there's a really popular girl, kitty cat, called Felicia Furry Paws, who's the queen bee of the baby mouse's third grade class. Felicia's having a sleepover, and she invites everybody but baby mouse. However, baby mouse is not without friends. She just doesn't realize how good she has it. She has a best friend named Wilson the Weasel. They watch monster movies together. They make cupcakes together. They've been best friends since kindergarten. So she may has plans to have a really nice monster movie night with Wilson and they're gonna have cupcakes and it's gonna be great. Due to a series of events, however, Baby Mouse gets invited to Felicia Furry Paws' sleepover, which is on the same night as her night with Wilson. But going to the sleepover, Baby Mouse realizes that these aren't the kind of friends she wants. They're mean. They just talk. They don't really, they're not as imaginative. They, they're mean towards others. And so she ends up realizing that she's got it pretty good. She's the queen of her own world. So I think that this would definitely appeal to readers in second, third, third or fourth grade. So again, it's a step up from Otto's Backwards Day. And it's really cute. And it also has a great message about realizing what kind of friend you want to be and what kind of friends you want to have, which I think is a really important lesson that is really hard to learn. All right, this last book is so weird. It's called Chicken Hair. And it's not exactly for the super young readers like the previous two. I'd say it would be good for third graders, fourth graders, and fifth graders. The reason I say that is even though it looks silly, it's about a half rabbit, half chicken named Chicken Hair and his friend and partner in crime, partner in crime, Abe the Turtle. And they're captured by a black market exotic animal trade trader. And the traders go, sells them to a taxiderm, an evil taxidermist named Klaus, who likes to torture and kill exotic animals so that they will never leave him. And so Chicken Hair and Abe get sold and they make new friends with these other strange creatures. And they do end up escaping Klaus, but in the storm, they meet the dead ghost of Klaus's very first pet, Mr. Buttons. And they need to go unearth Mr. Buttons' body and thaw it out, and so Button's spirit can go back into his body, and then they go into a cave full of these little weird demonic little creatures, <laughs> and the creature, and then Klaus and his evil cohorts end up chasing after the creatures because they escaped, and he wants them back, and it's just a really strange adventure story. I thought it was cute in a weird way. <laughs> I, th I think it was definitely unique, and I, I would read the next one, but it's definitely, it, while it's not too scary, I wouldn't say it's as scary as some other books, graphic novels out there. I would say, though, however, it deals with some darker concepts. So I, again, I would say this might be better for third, fourth, and fifth grade, more advanced readers of graphic novels. So that was today's Books with Becca, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye.